Welcome YouTube friends and family to this edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So today's video is going to be a little of this and a little of that. I'm actually recording this intro days after what you're about to see. I thought I would take you along and just show you what it's like if you've never been to estate sale auctions. They can be um, really fun, really interesting, but they're fast paced and it's hard to catch everything you might want if two rings are going on at the same time. So I'm going to insert all the clips from arrival through some of the auction, what it looks like, what the rules were, and then I will come back and share with you what I bought. Stay tuned. Oh, here's the good news. I had to pack up, park on the back 40. It is completely jammed with cars, so that's great. So let's go in and see what it looks like. Because when you shake your head no, we're gonna trust you. Now we may come back to you one time and see if you wanna bid again. We are gonna sell the item, we're gonna move forward. You'll catch up with us, okay? But uh, we do like to keep it moving. Folks, the order of the auction, we're gonna be starting here on the front tables, working on tools for a while. At that point, then we'll be pulling off the back tables and the side tables as we go. At 10.30, that gentleman right there, that's Greg Fitz, a real good uh, auctioneer, and uh, apprentice auctioneer <laughs> technically, but he's already passed the hunt. He's no longer a freshman, he's an upperclassman now. <laughs> Grant is going to go across the way. He's going to talk to you in the warehouse. Got a lot of household goods. We will be getting the tools in the warehouse after we have finished these tools. We're going to kind of synchronize it uh, as best we can, and we'll talk to you about those tools over there and the uh, equipment after we get done in here. He'll be going, though, at 1030 and starting on the household items here on the north side of the barn. At noon, we're going to be going outside. We're going to get to the truck, that uh, little red truck out there. Um, we will be talking about it, and then the lawn equipment. And all the while, continuing in here, at 1 o'clock, one of the rings will come over here to the furniture, and we'll be talking to you about furniture. That's our plan. We do reserve the right to change our minds and uh, go if we need to do something a little different if circumstances work. We'll let you know, give you as much time as possible to work with us on that. Folks, in terms of the option, cash, check, or credit card are the payment terms. With the credit card, we do charge a 4% convenience fee. That's over your whole purchase. Now, on the uh, tax matter, we do have to charge tax here in Marine County, Ohio. That's 6.75%, six and three quarters of a percent. And we will charge that unless you are tax free. If you're a reseller or otherwise tax free, then let us know. We would rather you let the ladies know right now. If you haven't already done that, if that switch is not already turned off in your our system, then make sure that they know that so that those transactions, we don't have to back that tax out item by item. Uh, and later, that takes a lot longer. So make sure that you get that in. Again, if you haven't gotten the buyer's number, make sure you do that now. We would really appreciate that. That'll help the sale move along a little slow, a little quickly. Now, as far as buyer's numbers, we do like to have those buyer's numbers out so that we can see them. Uh, pull them out, we're gonna ask you to see them simply because I don't trust my eyes anymore, I don't trust my ears, I don't trust that guy at all. But the uh, fact is, we want to see what's going on so you can help us out. <laughs> yeah, see you later, Greg. But uh, we do wanna see those buyer's numbers. When you buy an item, it belongs to you, subject, of course, to your pay. The risk of loss passes to you when we say sold. We're gonna hand the small items out to you. You're responsible. If something gets up, walks away on you, then you know, we're gonna commiserate with you, but you are responsible for taking care of your own. Well, the auction was a huge success. There were actually four separate estates, two main estates, plus um, some little sales. <clears throat> The other auction with my mom's that had so much stuff was primarily tools. There were a lot of knives, and then there was a whole bunch of car-related 
um, posters and metal signs. I mean, it, it was something else. The trouble I ran into, if you heard him say, the auction started at 10, there were two rings. So one was in the big auction room I was showing you. The other was in the barn and it was a really chilly and windy day. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. So all the household goods, the box items were in the barn. I had my eye on some Pyrex. And so I was running back and forth all day long between the two. One of the things that I did that made me feel really good because it's hurtful guys, you will see things that have a lot of sentimental attachment that you decided not to keep that will go for $5 or $2.50. And one of the things that I did not want and did not need was my parents' silver plate. I don't want to polish silverware. And it just, I don't know, it just wasn't my thing. So this lady got it for $5. And being out in the barn, it was in a wood chest. A bird had pooped on it. Can you say poop on YouTube? Okay, I just did. Anyway, um, I shared with her that that was a wedding gift. It was from 1950 that I had found the original packaging. I'd put it in there. And I'm telling you guys, I thanked everyone I could that bought something. And once they figured out that I was the seller, let's just say, or that it was my parents' estate, the bidding totally changed and I <laughs> shamefully I got more money I, I shouldn't say that but you know what it was worth it so uh, I did have a family member um who sent a proxy bidder because she wanted my grandparents dining room furniture and guys like I said I can't keep it all and she got it so I was super happy about that um if I would have known she wanted it I would have um made sure she got it before the auction. But at any rate, it was all a big success. I sold about 75 Longaberger baskets. I don't have a final tally for you all yet. I'm sure they're still typing away. Plus yesterday was Easter. Today is Monday. What did I buy? <laughs> Y'all, I'm a little embarrassed, but I'm going to tell you. I only bought one thing back that was my mom and dad's. And that was a an antique lamp that was totally over the top. I always liked the lamp, but it was very Victorian. So nobody was bidding on it. So I bought it for $5 and then I turned around and sold it to a lady in the audience for 30. <laughs> Just saying. So, um, you know, it was hard, but then there were other things that were like, what? My mom's washer was in drawer was 20 years old. The what they sold them separately. Why? I don't know. The washer went for $200. It works great, but I, just things like that. Very surprising. So I did, I had my eye on this Pyrex, but I also had my eye on this. All right, you ready for it? Da, 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 da. It is a cookie jar. It is called Hey Diddle Diddle. There are lots of these guys, different manufacturers that copied it, but this is the actual Roseville pottery. It was made in the 40s. It's valued at $150. I paid $40. I think I got a deal. And it's so cute. And it's in mint. And I do mean mint condition. So Frankie has checked it out and he approves. The Pyrex that I had my eye on, unfortunately, they went way over on auction time. They like to be totally done at three. So they started selling things in lots instead of individually or a few pieces together. So he ended up with a lot of Pyrex, L-O-T lot, not a whole bunch. Well, okay, it's a whole bunch. But, um, and, and I'll have to take you in and show you sometime. I've got it all washed up. I actually use my Pyrex, lots of casseroles, bowls. Um, and then also, let me show you real quick. <clears throat> okay, this is super cute. So, I have both the yellow and the green, cream and sugar. And the green oil and vinegar. 
Now y'all might say, wow, that's Pyrex I've never seen. It isn't Pyrex. It's made by Gemco, G-E-M-C-O. They filed bankruptcy. They were absorbed by another company. Can't tell you what the company is, but these are super cute. And the pattern mimics, it is not identical, but it mimics, I think it's called Spring Daisy Pyrex. So that was what I was interested in, but I got mm, a whole lot more. So that was the auction very good experience guys I would do it again in a heartbeat you know they take a percentage I understand that but the thought of trying to sell everything my parents ever owned and kept it, it was impossible I couldn't do it all right we're gonna do a little something today I want to go see my mom and if y'all notice I'm a, I'm a little pale I know that <laughs> don't need to tell me um had a bit of a lupus flare, was in bed for a couple days, or da let's just say down, not my usual self. Well, I'm feeling much better today. So I thought we would make a dish together. I have one more little goodie to show you that I thought was super neat. I've talked many times about how small my refrigerator is, and the reason is there's a height restriction right here because up here is crown molding and I still love my cabinets. They're solid wood, they're really nice. I'm not gonna replace it. So in order to get a taller refrigerator, all that crown molding would have to come down and I don't want that. So I um, always have a challenge storing everything. That was my point. So guys, I, I've had this for a while, but I, won't, I hadn't shared it with you. I was at an antique store and on the floor, in the back, under a whole bunch of stuff, in a clothing booth, I found this gem. So, let me tip you down. Hopefully I won't. Okay. So it's actually a Lazy Susan. These are all glass with glass lids, so avoiding plastic, I thought it was a good thing. There's an X on this one because there's a small crack in the dish so I want to be sure I don't use it. Uh, this was made by General Electric and it is a refrigerator Lazy Susan. So um, I have it out because I had to wash what was in there, you know, empty um, storage. But even though this takes up a lot of room, I can store a lot of food and each one of these dishes comes out and it's pretty good size. It's great for leftovers or you can put pickles, condiments, that type thing. So I thought that was super cool. I didn't pay very much for it. I just absolutely loved it. So let's scooch that aside. Let me try to adjust you back up. <clears throat> so what are we gonna make today? So this Fix It and Forget It big cookbook, buy it used guys, because it's kind of pricey. I bought this and like two days later I saw one at the Goodwill back then it was a buck 99, but it has so many great crock pot recipes. And today I wanna go see my mom because I did not go see her on Easter. Feel a little bad about that. Y'all, my mom, I tell you what a challenge. She has forgotten kind of how to use her cell phone and she keeps turning it on airplane mode. I'm not sure how, or she will turn the volume down so she's not hearing me calling. My mom can't see to read a text anymore with her vision. So I'm thinking about getting her a landline. You know, if you've been through that with a senior person in your family, can you drop me a comment below? What do you do when your loved one can no longer use devices um, so that you can still communicate instead of having to run to, to see her every day? I want to talk to her every day, but I... And that's been our tradition every single day for the last 12 years at 7 a.m. I call, but mm, I can't, I can't get through to her. So if, if you can help me and, and y'all, if, if you know anything about dementia, if you think of your life as a timeline, okay, you're born, you're, um, in your twenties and thirties, then you're pre, <laughs> pre old age. And then you're a senior. When you have dementia, here's your timeline. What happens is your short-term memories began to shrink. So a cell phone was not anything my mom ever used. Um, when she was a little more uh, with it, we'll say, she could do it. 
she first lost her ability to text, um, then she lost her ability to answer the phone. So she's way back here, pre-cell phone. But I think that she would respond to a landline. So y'all drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions, I would love that. And what I want to do is get a phone with big numbers um, and then program it. One that has programs where I can put, you know, Kim, <laughs> Ben, you know, or whatever. All right, let's get to making this recipe. So the recipe I chose is cranberry chicken. So in my crock pot here, I have a whole chicken. Now this actually called for six chicken breast halves divided. I'm not gonna do that it, because it wanted you to layer it. I'm just gonna put it all in and it will be delicious. So, and I know this is upside down guys, but that's the only way you can open these cans, the other side I can't open. So this is whole berry cranberry sauce. I had a pack of these mandarin oranges in their own juice. Gonna use that. Get those out of the fridge. Um, just saying they're expired, but they're fine. You know, best by date. And then I think, <laughs> y'all, this is French onion soup. Really not clear on that. It says recipe secrets, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So you would use some French onion soup. And then you kind of have a choice. You can use Catalina, French, or I'm going to use Vidalia onion and summer tomato because the predominant taste of this is not tomato. So I'm just gonna make a sauce. I'm gonna cook this on low, probably six to eight hours. So when dinner time comes, I will have delicious dinner. So I'm gonna start here with a little bit, should have shaken that, shook, shaken. There we go. With some of this dressing. And the actual original recipe calls for an eight ounce bottle. Um, and this very much has a French taste. So I'm just covering the chicken. Y'all can't see. Mm. <laughs> I'm the only one that's gonna eat this, guys. Then so my chicken has a little liquid. I'm going to put the mandarin oranges with the juice in. Distribute those. Let's see what the recipe is. Yeah, it's French onion. I can smell it. So dehydrated onions. And I kind of want that in the bottom. So I'm going to sprinkle that around. Maybe just a little on the top. And then my final ingredient is the whole berry cranberry sauce. Probably going to need enough. And the, guys, this will melt down. I'm just gonna kind of hunk it up around the chicken. And I'll reposition here in a minute and just show you what it looks like. I think I'm gonna put just a touch of water. You could use chicken broth. My chicken broth is canned in quartz. I don't wanna open a quart. Let me reposition the camera and we will get uh, this cooking. But I wanna show you what it looks like. Stay tuned a moment. So doesn't that look absolutely delicious? I think I'm going to add about half a cup or so of water. Just put some water in. But if you've never had cranberry orange chicken, this is super savory. Very, very good. And I do recommend when you're cooking whole chicken in your slow cooker to do it on low so that it doesn't dry out. And we will just scooch that back and let it cook away. I want to give you an update on my seedlings and show you a new product, um, which I'm not affiliated with and I'm not selling. I just want to share it with you. So stay tuned for just a moment. So the first thing I want to show you is I finally have pumpkins by planting over and over and over again. My cayenne red hots are starting to develop their second set of leaves. My onions are coming along. These back here are Roma tomatoes. My sugar pie pumpkins are doing great, guys. I have second sets of leaves coming, and then these are jalapenos, and they are doing great as well. So, <laughs> Miss Impatient did not wait long enough, and aside from the pumpkins that wouldn't come up, uh, things I double planted, so I have a lot of twofers in there and I will separate those when I get ready to plant in the garden. I'm sitting here now in my dining room 
with my beautiful new mid-century modern table that I purchased specifically to have my arrow garden here. So look how great my yellow cherry tomatoes are doing. And if you all have an arrow garden and you're having a little bit of trouble, they've changed a few things. So this is a 2019 model, so I've had it for three years. And now they're recommending that you do a full water exchange down in here because it's grown hydroponically. And when they get all of the, shall we say, nutrients from the water or what they need from the water, you need to replace it. So I've done that and I'm telling you what, the tomatoes really took off. So there's a suggestion for you. This is removable. It's like a trellis to keep your tomatoes like tamed in, which I will need as they get taller and taller. And then I can raise my lamp. This is still running 15 hours a day. That's what tomatoes need. But when I did the water exchange, guys, I have roots that are like this long. It's amazing. And it's starting to require a lot more water addition than it does at first. So make sure you keep it topped off. Feed it when it tells you to feed it. Download that app because it will send you a message when it's time to feed or it's time to add water. I'm adding, and they also said don't wait until it tells you to add water, keep it topped off. So that's part of my morning chores. So I wanna show you a new product I'm so excited about. And I came across it totally by accident. I think I was on the Arrow Garden website for some reason, who knows. And I did order it off Amazon because it was cheaper with shipping. They now have a seed starting system. Now, when you get ready to order this, guys, know your model. This is called a Bounty. There's way more models than that, so you wanna order the one that's going to fit inside your Aero Garden. So what is it? It's a seed starting system. It's so, so cool. Okay, so what do you get? You get a 50 pod system. Now. I think they're so close together, and from what I read on reviews, a lot of people would skip every other one. I think that's probably best. Um, and it comes with 50 um, plugs or grow sponges, okay, like this. So instead of the cage around the pod, you just have the plastic down here. So I think it's gonna be a lot easier when it comes time to transplant. So. This was $28. I thought that was uh, an absolute steal given how much Aero Gardens cost. I probably will still use it for some mid-season items. Uh, maybe use it to uh, do a little bit of flowers. Why can't I get this box together? <laughs> oh my word. Okay, close enough, right? So I'm very excited to try this. As soon as I can transplant my tomatoes into my garden, and yes, I will put them in the dirt. I've done it before and it works really well. I will use my seed starting system, see what I wanna get started, maybe get a jump on the season. I like having my crops, if you will, come in throughout the season. All right, so this is not all of it, guys, but while I'm in here, I'm going to show you. Let me stand up here so I can adjust the so here is a lot of the Pyrex I bought. One of the casseroles is in the refrigerator because I'm using it. Some I've used for decor, um, but yes, I got a lot. I did not have the gravy boat. And this is the pattern, guys, that I really, really like. My favorite, of course, is blue and pink. That's already been put up. So I got a huge lot, a huge lot for one price. Um, gosh, okay, that's the same. Here's one that I was like, what on earth is this with the wide rim? Guys, this is, it's missing the lid. It's a margarine tub holder and it had a plastic lid. So I'll be on the hunt for a lid that fits because I thought this was super cool. Set of bowls. Here's a couple casseroles. Um, this pattern is really cute. It's from the 70s. It's the mushroom pattern and people really wanted this piece and when they put it in the lot i had some bidding competition but most of the people there are resellers so they have a very tight ceiling and limit they cannot pay what it's worth 
they need to get it super cheap so it was it was easy yes i now have three yellow butter dishes but i'm gonna pass at least one along to someone so i really don't need three of the same butter dish so stay tuned i want to give you a few final thoughts fourth time's the charm <laughs> had a little problem with um, not pushing the record button, talking away, but I did want to share just a few final things. First of all, I wanted to show you what the beautiful poppy casserole looks like, and this, guys, is mint. Minty, minty, minty. No scratches. So, never put your Pyrex in the dishwasher. This was not designed, most of it was not designed to go in the dishwasher, especially the older pieces. So, it's snowing. <laughs> I don't know whether to wear flip-flops or Ugg boots right now. It's just been crazy weather here. Drop me a comment. What's your weather like? Like, we always have variable spring springtime weather, but this has been really nuts. We've had lows in the 20s, and now we're going to have a high of 80 by the weekend. Yeah, just really weird. So, glad at least my garden is ready for planting when the time comes and it's frost-free date. So, thankfully, my mom just called. That's always a good thing. And I'm really interested, guys, please, if you have any suggestions of what to do. Because at first I was calling the facility, having them go up to a room. Well, that gets old really quick. They're busy. They don't have time to do that. It's kind of outside what they need to be doing. But, yeah, so I need to take care of that. And <clears throat> let's see, what else do I have to tell you? We've got a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, so I hope that if you aren't subscribed, you'll hit that subscribe button, ring the bell to be notified of all the new videos. I post a new video every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Usually goes up at 4 a.m. Sometimes it goes up earlier, it just depends. But by the time you get up on those days, there should be a video that's dropped and waiting for you. So I did want to tell you that uh, my worms are doing great. They're in the garage because it's too cold to be outside but they are eating and doing all the things. So that's a really good thing too. So things are moving along and I wanna encourage you all. Have you put some extra things in your pantry? Have you put a few extra things on your shelf? Guys, please do. Please take heed now. Um, and if I'm wrong, you're not out anything. You'll have plenty of food on your shelf. Georgia just declared a state of emergency for the next 30 days because of supply chain issues. And guys, I'm telling you, Right now, stores may look pretty good, but I want most of that product, and I have talked to many of the store managers just because I'm interested, has come from what was stuck in port, what had a supply chain interruption, their old orders that are finally coming in, and they don't know what the outlook is. Based on what I read, around June, we're gonna really start seeing shortages. Get you some toilet paper. I now have a year supply. <laughs> I never ran out, guys, but I got pretty low, and that that's a true emergency. Funny the things that you think you have to have, but at any rate. So even if you're not a home producer or canner, go to the store. There's nothing wrong with buying canned food. Put it on your shelf for a day that you might need it. So I hope you'll stay tuned for some upcoming videos. I am going to be doing a pantry project that I'm very excited about, and I want to share that with you as well. So I will see you all very soon. Don't forget to smash that like button. Leave me a comment below. I love hearing from you. And as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed. And I'll see you all real soon. Take care.